Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2 and we are here in our island treasures zoo where people are wearing our amazing people backpacks. Did you see that? Look at that kid. <gasps> I love these backpacks. I am so excited when I see people wearing them and also the platypus are driving me up a wall. I'm going to keep an eye on them but if they have a hard time today we're probably going to be moving them. But I was just coming over here to check on Oceana and her adorable eggs. She actually has not moved off of the eggs since laying them and there are a lot of hungry animals in the zoo. She should probably probably check on those but I wanted to see how Oceana's eggs are coming along because I found out when I was doing a little more research we did lots of research last time on the Galapagos tortoise and their eggs but I found out when I was doing a little bit more research that the Galapagos tortoise young when they hatch out of the egg it can take them weeks to dig their way out and if there's been a flood and they can drown and if the there's been a drought the dirt can be too hard and they won't be able to dig their way out it was just like oh my gosh it's so hard to be a tortoise baby so, like, you really have to work to get big and old and 40 and finally be able to have your babies. Oh, we're going to have baby tortoises today. I'm so excited. But let's go ahead and see what hungry animals are here. The zoo needs some dessert carts. Well, you know, we might as well put a dessert cart over here since the man is requesting. Um, hmm. Hmm. Maybe some of these. I Well, you know, I say a dessert cart and then I go and I reach for plants. But I noticed we had an empty spot over here, and I was thinking, you know what? That spot would look good with some plants. Maybe a nice little Achilles tree over there, too. And I was right. It does look nice with plants and Achilles tree. All right, and then we'll go ahead. We already have a bench right here. Let's put down a new dessert cart, just because we can. All right, let's see. Dessert carts, dessert carts. Let's go to carts. There we go. Um, there's candy cart, cheesecake cart. We already have a cheesecake cart because I think cheesecake's awesome. But I also love pretzels. So let's go ahead and look at pretzels. Pretzels. Ice cream. Well, ice cream is really cool too, actually. You know what? We'll do ice cream here. Uh, and not right in front of the ATM. <laughs> Alright, let's put the ice cream. Whoops. And let's not put him at that angle. Let's put him at this angle. And then let's go ahead and we need to grab... Actually, we need the endangered music rocks down here, I think like hiding over here and then maybe over here by the restaurant and we'll put in more like greenery over here in the future too oh it was platypus i swear and then let's go ahead and put the trash can down um maybe over here there we go so now people will be able to come over to the low cheap ice cream cart and oh we should come up with some fun ice cream flavors like we used to so what would be a fun island ice cream flavor maybe something like coconut like um chocolate triple chocolate coconut so we need to come up with some cool ice cream flavors there you go sir and we'll rename the ice cream cart so yeah we'll do that with the desserts what do you guys think that would be fun all right so there's that and why is this woman complaining she needs to find a bathroom well we probably should install some more restrooms so i don't blame her there why is this child over here child come over this way please why are these people just like are they just walking out the back of the restaurant? What are you guys doing? I don't even know. But if you guys remember last time, we were getting ready to add in some of the Axis deer. And I looked it up and they're actually pretty decent. These deer, and let me go to the island treasures so that we can focus in on them. But these deer are actually prey for a lot of important carnivores, island excursions, and they're pretty laid back. It turns out that they often just hang out with a lot of, um, like the peafowl. They hang out with a lot of peacocks, and they hang out with these guys right here, these langur. So these guys are apparently really cool little monkeys who live to about 20. Um, their babies are really differently colored from the adults and they primarily eat leaves, which I thought was pretty cool. So they can, they can eat everything, but they primarily have a diet of leaves and they spend most of their time up in trees. <gasps> the Galapagos tortoise babies just hatched. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's go look at them. Hello, little ones. Hello. Oh, look at him. And they're actually much smaller when they hatch, just so you guys know. They're teensy tiny when they hatch. She's like, excuse you. Excuse you, ma'am. You were on top of my egg the whole time. <gasps> Did the other one just hatch? Is she still... Oh, there she is. There it is. There it is. Look, you can see the little egg curled up next to mama. Oh, that's the most precious thing. Oh, and I need a third picture of an endangered species. I totally forgot. Oh, gosh. We'll work on that, too. Perry, stop being sick. Oh, I'm going to have to sell those platypus. We just... They're not going the way I thought they would. All right. So the babies are moving. These guys hardly ever move. I think we'll add some finches in here and pretend they're like Javian finches because 
Oh my goodness. They have a good relationship with Javian finches that like ride on their back and peck off insects that try to get on them. So we'll put some, some birds in here so things kind of get spiced up in the, the slow moving, you know, they move a little faster in the very slow moving Galapagos tortoise area. All right. You know what, guys? I think this is quits for the platypi. So I'm going to adopt the platypus out, even though it really sucks because we just are not having good enough luck with them. I've tried redesigning the exhibit and then they get kind of glitchy. They seem to only eat once and then they just stop eating. So we're going to turn this exhibit into something else because I feel so sad for the fact that we have miserable Galapagos or miserable platypi. All right, we're going to go ahead and sell him. <gasps> we had a baby pea fowl and I didn't even know it. Oh, look at the baby. So I'm going to really miss the platypus because I really wanted to have platypus, but it was just miserable. Look at the little baby pea fowl. Oh, little pea fowl family. Little pea fowl family action going on down here. That's so nice. Oh, and couscous. The couscous just died of old age. Oh, and we are getting... Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh my goodness. I think we have a kangaroo, a kangaroo problem. I think we may have a few too many kangaroo. This is a little bit, this is a little bit exciting. I'm gonna admit it. This is a teeny bit exciting. All right, we're just gonna come down here. Yeah, we've got, we've got a few too many. I think we've got a few too many kangaroo, you guys. Um, It's kind of beautiful in a horrifying way, isn't it? All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna get in here. Let's start cleaning everything. Hello, everybody. I know. Hi. Hi. Yeah, you've really done a number over here. Okay. Yep, there's some. There's some poop over here, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I need to get... <gasps> Do we have... Oh, really, really, really quickly. Let's check if we have a compost bin. Because you can actually earn money from, like, cleaning up all the poop when you have a compost bin. And it seems like a good a time as any to check. All right. So we need, like, a little compost heap. All right, there it is, there it is. Let's get the compost building. All right, we're going to start researching that. And then over here to entertain people, I think I want to put, yeah, let's put this aquarium with tropical fish that people can look at when they walk over here just to keep the, like, fish and the island vibe going without actually having, like, fish areas laid out. So we'll do that. And I think it's time to say goodbye to some of the kangaroos. So let's go ahead. Oh, yay, more pregnant kangaroos. I'm going to go ahead and just start grabbing a few at random. We're just going to say that we're picking some healthy, healthy adults to send out into the distance. So let's see. And blue has been around and there'll be ones that like don't have names because, you know, we're attached to the ones that have names. All right. We're going to do this one and this one. Oh my goodness. There's so many kangaroos. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, off into the distance with all of you. There's a lot of males, too. And will the males start fighting, like, territory issues if there's a ton of them? Aw, oh, dang it, this one's a joey. All right, all right. Um, let's, let's do some of the younger males. Because the older males have already established themselves as, uh, you know, being part of this group. All right, there's a whole bunch of them. We'll adopt out the last young male. And let's try again. There we go. All right, hopefully that'll help. That really... Oh, I should have shrunk down how many kangaroos we have running around. It would kind of be nice just to have a turtle wandering around in here and pretend it's like one of the turtles that belongs in Australia too. So we might look into that as well. I want to start doing a lot more multi-species exhibits, even if we kind of have to tweak and pretend what species is what, just to just the limitations of the mod and whatnot. Mods, I should say. All right, so we're finally full circle back over here where I was telling you guys about these monkeys who focus on eating leaves and the deer that they act, that you actually find pretty often with them. I thought that was really cool when, oh, and there's the compost building. Yes, let's just put this sucker in a corner somewhere. All right, you can go live over there, compost building. And we'll take care of it in the future. But yeah, I just was very excited when I was seeing that they were listed as creatures that you often would find together and that these deer are actually important food for the sun bear. And I don't think the sun bear is in this collection, but these axis deer and some of their related species are food for the sun bear, as well as some of the jaguars I th or leopards. I, th I think leopards, maybe, or jaguars. 
one or the other, the big cats that also live where the Axis deer live. So I thought that was really fun. And so I was thinking we might try, I don't know if it'll work very well, but I wanna make this a little bit of a bigger enclosure. And I wanna try having, um, in fact, I wonder if I could make this work. I wanna try making the enclosure big enough that we could maybe have like a path that slopes down and it goes under the enclosure. No, that won't work. We could do one that goes over. Yeah, we might have a walking path down here. And Garlic the Couscous is now pregnant. We have a couscous named Garlic, just in case you guys didn't know. All right, so let's go ahead and put down some fencing. And do, do, do. Uh, we should probably just do, 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 do all, there we go. And we're gonna put down some fencing and Ted Worthina, which is another another couscous we have, just in case you guys didn't know. And this is a hundred. And how much is it to put this one down? Two twenty-five. So we'll do the hundred first. So I want to make a path that comes up and goes over, so you can just walk over, and you can be like, "Wow, that's so cool! Look at everything in here!" And it'll be just a huge multi-species exhibit. Um, no, we lost a star. How do we lose a star? All right, and I think we'll do this right here. And we don't have to make it quite, yeah. This, this I mean, this will still be huge once we get everything all put together. All right, well, we're gonna put that there. And here. And let's go ahead, delete all this. There we go. This is gonna be really cool. I have, I've got a like fun idea in mind for this. Yay, the zoo has become more famous. We just got back the star we lost. I love the curves right there too. That's really pretty. All right, and we're gonna open this up. Whoops, I opened it up a little bit too much. Sorry about that. And then before we start putting things down, let's try to get that bridge built. Cause I always love those little paths where you can kind of go up. You can just see the animals from different locations and perspectives. Um, is this enough? I think this is gonna be enough. And then we're gonna have it go straight. Come here, be a good path. All right, go straight. And then we're gonna have it come down. All right, need to have it go straight a little bit more. All right, come on, there we go. And then let's come over and come down. That looks good to me. Okay, good. And just one and whoops. Okay, gotta be very careful. Sometimes working with these paths can be a little bit frustrating, but not usually. All right, and then we'll go down. Oh, Hops has just died of old age. Goodbye, Hops the kangaroo. And Carrie the couscous is now pregnant. Yay, so we have this installed. Look at all the balls that got shoved up against the corner there. Oh my goodness. All right, got that installed, and let's get back to the mix of the tropical dry forest and kind of the like temperate or other forest that we had, because we're, we're gonna use a little mix of it. So tropical dry forest. Whoa, that's not exactly what I meant to do. <laughs> My bad. All right, and we're gonna put this all here. I need to put the bridge down for just a minute. Look at the little balls rolling around, that's adorable. And then we need, was it the temperate rainforest I was doing a little? Yeah. Just kind of little mixing pieces in there. Maybe tropical dry forest just a little bit. Nice, nice. I, I really actually like having these kinds of bushes because apparently the axis deer you can often find around scrubland sort of looking areas. And that's what these kind of bushes remind me of or sort of scrubland bushes. Let them walk through that. And then over on this side, we might kind of make it move from scrubland to just like a tiny little jungle segment. That'll be more for our little monkey, our leaf eating monkeys. All right, yeah, you guys, right there, you. All right, let's get some trees that you might like in here. Like the Kili tree, the ever popular Kili tree, which I feel like a lot of the creatures climb up in. So I like putting a lot of Kili trees in. But they're very arboreal, which means that they like to live up high in trees. If you're terrestrial, that means you like to be down on terra firma, the ground. If you're arboreal, that means you like to climb trees. So we'll put those there. Thankfully, we don't have to worry quite as much as a real zoo of if the trees are too close to like the fences and the little animals are just gonna skedaddle straight out. Ooh, the saco palm is so pretty. So we're not gonna worry as much as we would normally about that. Um, that's kind of a wetlands thing. Um, let's see, maybe some of the tree ferns, like a tree fern or two. Yeah, just a couple over here. There we go. All right, what are some other things we can do for the monkeys? Because I want to make sure that they're happy too. I hope we have enough money for all of the things I wanted to. I keep forgetting money is definitely an object because this zoo is still very new. Ah, yeah, the large palms. 
would probably help to kind of tie the thicker areas together like so and give them sort of little protected spots where they can feel like they're really not being seen by too many humans there we go nice and then let's see large ferns which would be kind of cool we might have like a little food and water under the bridge um and then let's see there's java moss which apparently goes in the water large jungle palms over here too but i think we'll leave this area kind of open like it is and oh there's lots of oh the new guinea's impatience yes that's true i like these guys i just think they're very lovely they're just little splashes of color and that can be quite fun all right and then maybe one two over here maybe three there we go there we go. I'm very happy with this. And then a couple little ferns and mushrooms. And I was just reading an article, you guys, over how important mushrooms are. Because I know a lot of people are always teasing me. Zero, you put so many mushrooms down. But they were showing how mushrooms really help to nurture and take care of all of the other plants. The pathways that they forge through the soil are used to transport nutrients to multiple different plants. So plants aren't just like independent from the other plants and other root systems nearby them. Root systems of plants are often shared and root systems even between fungi and plants, fungi are not plants, are often shared as well as they transport and exchange nutrients, sometimes steal nutrients from the other. There are parasitic plants that will kind of steal from other plants. Um, kind of want to do some hanging vines, but I think we're okay. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. For all of you who are always like, Sarah, you focus on plants too much. Well, remember, there are mushrooms too much. The mushrooms do play a role. So that's my then my little piece there. And I actually do like these little guys. We'll put on some of these little guys around here. There we go. That's better. That's better. All right, so let's add in some deer. We are gonna make this an interesting exhibit. I'm even gonna put some of the peafowl in because I think peafowl are just very colorful and fun. And it would be fun just to kind of stumble on some that would be hiding in here. And maybe a, a couple of rocks. Just, I don't want anybody to get stuck on the rocks, but it seems like a good idea to put some rocks in here. All right, and what do we need? Ooh, and there's enough room for sure to have a misty spring in here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's so awesome. All right, so misty spring, and we can do like some feeder balls, and I can put down some bones, and like some figs as treats kind of hidden around the area. Um, let's see, and there's food. And they're mostly leaf eaters, so I'm gonna put down like mostly branches and the these leaves, the palm leaves. So we'll kind of put these over here and kind of like piles of palm leaves. And I'll put some water over here. No, the water deleted my little flowers. I don't want that. I'll put like a water thing here and there because I get frustrated when the water like makes all of my little plants disappear. Because that's why I have the plants is to hide the water. So that you don't just look into the exhibit and you're just staring at like water dishes. Where are the, yeah, these big fluffy guys. There we go. There, ha, ha. Take that water, now you're hidden. And because of the mods, the animals can still approach those water pieces. So I'm not worried. All right, and anything else for these guys? Um, Somewhere for them to rest is pretty important. So I could put just shade structure just kind of in here. And they'll kind of share that, and I actually like that idea, versus giving them like a cave. And they have food, they have water, and hopefully they don't eat the deer. If they eat the deer, we'll just have to put a fence right here <laughs> and make it so they can't reach the deer. All right, and we'll have to make sure the deer have something, and then we'll throw some peafowl in there for good measure, and we will have a very nice multi-species exhibit. Then we'll have to figure out something to replace the platypus, which I'm really sad that we just couldn't get them to work. Sometimes it just, it works that way. All right, little ones. You guys know I'm not a big monkey fan, but I'm going to add you guys in here. I'll do uh, two females, two males, and we'll just see where we get. Good luck, you guys. Good luck. All right, so there's those guys. I need to put another... I have a, I have a gate, so we're good there. Um, and let's check on... Ooh, the Axis deer have these beautiful antlers. Oh, my gosh. And would they have any food? Okay, they would have grass, so we'll put, like, the grass over here. And I think that should be good for them, like grass over here as well. And then I'll put some branches down over here, just so they have different things to chew on. And ooh, 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 we need to get the scratching post. And I'll put a salt lick kind of back here as well, so that they can use that too. And then anything they would need to rest under, 
they'd probably just rest under like shade structures. So I'm just gonna put this kind of in here because it almost looks like part of the tree when you do that. And I really like that effect. All right. And we'll put in, let's put down one male, two females and see what happens. Cause these are, well, let's do one male, one female for now. <laughs> Cause these are a little expensive and we will work on other creatures as we can. And then let's see about a peafowl. So where would I find my peafowl friend? <gasps> giraffes, I love giraffes, but they're not exactly island creatures. We have plenty of giraffes over at our savannah. There's koalas, Komodo dragon. Those guys will definitely have to come up next. The kiwi, we need to get a kiwi area. Oh my goodness, there's so many more creatures. We need to start adding in you guys. I am so excited, so excited. All right, where's my peafowl? Ostrich, oh, here's the peas, there we go. Peafowl, and let's see, we need a shelter for them. So we'll put like a peafowl shelter over here. And I think otherwise, whoops, let's flip it around. But I think otherwise it should be good. I wanna make sure they have food. They would just eat branches. We'll put down some fruit and anybody can come and get a little bit of fresh fruit. Um, and otherwise I think that they're ready. Peafowl are very forgiving. They just kinda, they just kinda take whatever you throw at them. Where'd they go? There she is. All right, and we'll do another just one male, one female pair in here and see if they prosper or not. And there we go, you guys. Hopefully this will work pretty well, but we just have one of our most complex multi-species exhibits that I've ever tried to do. I'm pretty darn happy about it. So there we are. Oh, let's go inside and take a quick tour of it. Cause I think this is amazing. Hello, little ones. Oh, this is, oh, we should put some water plants over here. That would be nice too. Hello, beautiful Misty Spring. All right, how you doing over here, dear? Hi, guys. Oh, this is pretty. This is a pretty good one. I think we did pretty good, you guys. Pretty happy with it. Look at this deer. Isn't he just handsome? I think he's pooping. Yep, pretty darn sure he's kind of adding his scent to the area. Well, thank you, sir. Can I get past this rock? Ah, oh, frustrating. I wanted to get a good look of Oh, look at him. Do it again. Do it again. That was awesome. Is he calling to her? Are they already off to have babies? They might already be going off to have some babies. Look at that. We've got a nice multi-species exhibit going on in here. I like this. All right. Well, there's those guys. Let's come over. Walk past all the trees. How are you guys? Hello. Hello, my little friend. Oh, you're not so bad looking. You're not so bad looking after all. All right, and I still just need to find a endangered species. Oh gosh, that I can take pictures of. So we'll work on that next time too. And just figuring out our zoo, but it's looking much better, isn't it, you guys? <gasps> Look at all the people on our bridge. Yes, yes. All right, we are making some real progress. I'm really starting to feel the vibe as we're moving into more multi-species exhibits. We're really making this look awesome. And I'm in love with this. So all right, guys, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.